There is nobody who can't get into the top 25% for their age and sex with a long enough training history. And the benefits of exercise are best tabulated and measured via the accrual of the intensity, duration, specificity of training and measured in this single number. I think it's just worth reiterating this. You know how you kind of get a little bit of buyer's remorse after you buy something? Well, I think every author gets a little bit of buyer's remorse after they publish a book. And there's one thing I don't, I mean, there's many things, but but one of the things that I think I fell short on in the book was I don't think I did a good enough job of explaining why VO2 max is so important. In other words, I gave the data, right? The data are unambiguous. You know, the association between uh, high VO2 max and longevity is so clear. And conversely, the association between low VO2 max and mortality is so clear that the idea that VO2 max is the single greatest predictor of lifespan of any measurable number we have um, is, is quite remarkable. And so I explained all of that well. What I failed to do was explain the why. Why is that the case? And, and so I want to take a moment to do so here. The reason that that is the case is that VO2 max is a remarkable integrator of the work you have done to get fit. And that's why strength is a very close second. So if we're going to tally all the possible biomarkers that would predict how long you're going to live, we could look at your ApoB, we could look at whether you have diabetes or not. We could look at your testosterone level, your cholesterol level. I mean, we could look at every imaginable thing, how much muscle mass you have, what your BMI is, all of these things. And if we rank ordered them in terms of their ability to predict how long you're going to live or state it another way, how well do they predict your ability, you know, the probability you're going to die this year? The very, very top of that list is VO2 max and directly under it is strength. Why? Because you can't fake those metrics and you can't cram for the test. You take a person with a low VO2 max and you send them to the gym for a month, they're not going to show up with a high VO2 max on the test. When someone shows up with a very high VO2 max, which by the way, anybody can have, Yes, genes play a role, just as they play a role in strength and everything else. But there is nobody who can't get into the top 25% for their age and sex with a long enough training history. And the benefits of exercise are best tabulated and measured via the accrual of the intensity, duration, specificity of training and measured in this single number. So in that sense, you know, for math geeks out there, VO2 max is the integral from T1 to T2 of work as a function of time DT. And that's a big DT to get a high VO2 max. The same is true with strength. When we talk about how grip strength and leg extension strength and all of these metrics of strength are so highly correlated, it's the same thing. You can't take someone who's not strong and make them strong in a month. And yet think about how easy it is to tweak your vitamin D level in a month. Like it's trivial, right? So that's why I look at all of these bioaging clocks that have all these goofy little biomarkers that are so easy to manipulate. And I think this stuff's categorically useless. A real demonstration of your longevity prowess is going to be far more likely found in, in, in variables that can't change readily. And again, these are these are two of the greatest. So looking looking at this graph here, and I realize that there are many people listening to this, so I'm not going to kind of belabor this point, but we'll obviously make the all these figures are available in the notes. But but this to me is is a fantastic benchmark for a person who wants to understand where they stack up. So it's a figure that divides men and women by decade of life into five categories, low, below average, above average, high, and elite, which is the ranking assigned to their VO2 max. Low is the bottom 25%, below average is the second quartile, above average is the third quartile, and high and elite together form the top quartile where elite just carves out the top 2.3%. And so I would encourage everybody to know where their VO2 max is and also to understand, hey, where do I stack up? relative to people my age. By the way, I'll also point out, you want to hold yourself to a higher standard. So I just aged up, right? So I'm 50. And you'll notice that at 49, when I was at the top of my age range, an elite VO2 max was above 52. Whereas 
at the age of 50 and from age 50 to 59, it's greater than 50. Uh, and this is again in, millile in milliliters per kilogram per minute. Um, well, as a 50 year old, knowing that I need to be in this age bracket for another decade, I am not holding myself to the standard of just being at 50, right? Like I want to be a couple decades beyond that. I want to be in the elite level for someone in their 30s, which would be north of 53. And that doesn't sound like much, but that's a pretty big difference when you consider that this number is going down at about 8 to 10% per decade, depending on your, your training volume. So again, very clear way to know how you stack up. And again, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, probably a little less important where you are in the moment and more important, uh, you know, in terms of the trajectory you're heading in. 